everyone, and welcome to this week's episode of Night's Talk. I, I'm Rob Leonard, and uh, I almost forgot my name for a minute. I'm your host, Rob Leonard, and uh, we've got a great show ahead of us. Uh, the Knights had a very busy week, uh, three games in four nights, uh, and we're going to finish off tonight's show with uh, two defensemen, Declan Flanagan and Alec Bolduc will be my guests. But let's start with last Thursday night at home versus the Ville Marie Pirates. Uh, Mark, you've got all the goals for that one. Let's take a look. The best opportunities they can get when they get them. Absolutely, he's a quick shot, scores! Screened shot. Fight. Justin Frechette did not see that at all. Here comes Gabriel Cote. Cote in shot, back hit, scores! David for Gabriel Cote with his second of the night. For providing the crew refreshments, some fantastic pizza, call 519-538-6805. And the Knights have scored. Yes, they have. As, as you mentioned, Amici's are one of our favorite sponsors. An absolute beautiful roofing from Xavier Casa, number 98. Once, almost twice, but picked up there by Gabriel Cote. Cote gets it across for Ville Marie. Ville Marie into the zone, tiered in front, scores! I think that went off of the Meaford uh, player's skate, uh, off of Martin Badura. Goes Swallow for number 19, Swallow. Almost looked like Swallow was trying to score on his own net. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely, there's a giveaway right in front. Tipped it, scores! Unfortunate giveaway. It's like, a, I'll say poke, but taken off the stick. There of number 19, Taylor J. Swallow. Like back for Swallow, shot blocked in front by Bull Duke. Centered though, shot scores! Dumped in there by Makar Korachenko. As you see Morehouse there at the end, of, at, at the back of the bench, still grimacing, but here come the Knights of Meaford. Shot scores! Fantastic individual effort by Max Johnson. It seems to have, uh, have uh, struck a chord with the team. They're playing with a lot more hop in their step. Absolutely, another shot scores! Number 91, Martin Madura. It's 5-3. Madura, bad pass. Picked up there by Bill Marie. Centered in front, Micho. Beckett scores. And, and the Knights of Meaford lose their first home game against tonight against the Bill Marie Pirates, six to three. As you can see, the uh, Knights of Meaford fell by a score of six to three to the Bill Marie Pirates. Uh, let's give Bill Marie their due. These uh, guys took a long bus trip from Bill Marie in Quebec. And uh, they played an outstanding game, and uh, the Knights, uh, nothing to be ashamed of on the Knights, uh, as I said, with the 6-3 score. Uh, scoring for the Knights, Xavier Caza, Max Johnson got his first goal of the season, and Martin Bordura, sorry, Badura, was <laughs> around the scoring for the Knights. Now, uh, the, as I said, the Knights had three games in four nights uh, on Saturday night, or... Uh, yeah, it was on Saturday night, or sorry, Friday night. Friday night, the Knights would get on their team bus and head off to Sturgeon Falls to play the West Nipissing Lynx. These two teams played the week prior, and it was a really good game, good uh, close-checking game in, in Meaford. The Knights held on for a 6-4 decision in that one, but not to be the case in West Nipissing. Uh, I'm going to say that the Knights stomped uh, the West Nipissing Lynx by a score of 8-2, to two. I watched the game on TV, and uh, the West Nipissing was not in this game at all from start to finish. Uh, in this game, Blaze Siebert would score his first two of the season. Hayden Phillip uh, finally got back on the score sheet again with a pair. Uh, Xavier Roy or Roy, uh, would score his first of the season. Riley Lavalle with a single. Uh, Mason McNeil had a three-point night with one goal and two assists for three points. And uh, one of our guests, Declan Flanagan, Flanagan uh, uh, potted a single as well. So, as I said, three games and four nights. The next night, the, the uh, uh, Knights would be in Bradford to take on the Rattlers. Now, the Rattlers should have been road weary. They had three and three nights. But uh, the Rattlers came out on top in this one by a score of eight to four, uh, scoring for the Knights. Brian Laurie with his first two goals of the season. 
uh, Hugo Stalnak would uh, score a single, as well as Xavier Caza in that eight to four loss. Now, Mark, if we could take a look at the, uh, we're going to take a look at the uh, league standings, if we could. Now, as you can see, Tomeskaming still on top with a 12 and one record, 24 points. Rattlers lost two games over the over the weekend, uh, one to Tomeskaming and the other to Ville Marie. So they fall to eight and two with 16 points. Uh, let's take a look down to the Knights. The Knights have moved up a spot. They were sitting in eighth. They now sit in seventh spot with a record of four wins, three losses and an overtime loss for nine points. And the team sitting in sixth spot, just ahead of them, the Knights will face uh, the Bancroft Rockhounds on uh, Thursday night in Meaford. Uh, they're only two, two points ahead of the Knights, so uh, a victory on Thursday night for the Knights uh, would move them into a sixth place tie with uh, Bradford, uh, sorry, with Bancroft. So uh, the Knights are definitely moving in the right direction in the standings. Uh, now, if we could take a look at the North Division. Nothing's changed really over there, except that we've got a two-way tie for first spot now. Durham Region, 11-0, 22 points. North York, uh, 11 wins, one loss, 22 points. And I've been keeping an eye on St. George because they've been such a powerhouse over the years, and uh, they've moved up uh, in the standings as well. They're sitting in fourth spot with a record of six and three for 18 points. Now, if we could take a look at the Knights' leading scorers, Martin Badura uh, sitting on top now with four goals, eight assists for 12 points. Mason McNeil, five goals, six assists, 11 points. Uh, then we've got Declan Flanagan sitting in uh, spot number three, two goals, seven assists. Uh, and then you look in, uh, I guess, positions five through, uh, we've got four nights uh, with, uh, sorry, got to read my own writing here. <laughs> Uh, with uh, We've got four Knights sitting in there with six points each, and Riley Lavalle is going to round it out with three goals and two assists for five points. If we could take a look at the league's leading scorers. Santino, uh, Santino Foti has really poured it on uh, now. Uh, 12 games played, he's got 43 points, 25 goals, 18 assists. That's an average of almost four points a game, so uh, uh, he's really turned it on there. Uh, Charles Sipiat sitting in second place from the Tomiskaming Titan, Titans, 14 goals, 20 assists for 34 points. And uh, th there was uh, a lot of um, a lot of South players that were uh, taking up those top 10 spots. But now there's a good mix, uh, a good mix of both North and South. So uh, uh, both divisions represented well in the top 10 scoring in the league. Now let's take a look at the Knights' upcoming games. This coming Thursday night at home, Rogers TV will be there. Uh, I'll be there along with uh, my sidekick, Spencer uh, Spencer Byers. I should have mentioned in those highlights that was Spencer Byers doing the uh, doing the play by play uh, last Thursday night. Spencer did a great job. So, uh, okay, again, November 11th, this coming Thursday night, Bancroft uh, will be uh, the opponent for the Knights at home. Uh, we take a look at November 17th and 18th. The Bradford Bulls, the Knights have got a, a home and home uh, series against them. Uh, they'll be in Bradford on the 17th, back home on the 18th. That should uh, set up for an interesting game on the 18th. Um, and looking further, they've got South Muskoka twice more in the month of November. Uh, they'll finally get to meet New Tech. Uh, they haven't played New Tecumseh yet. They'll be playing them twice. Then November 26th, 27th, uh, the Knights will be traveling to Tomiskaming and Ville Marie, and uh, that's going to pretty much round out the month of November. So, all right, so it's time to meet the Knights. And as I said, uh, my special guests are Declan Flanagan and Alec Bolduc. Gentlemen, good e uh, how are you? Good, how are you? Great, thank you very much. And uh, first, let's start with Declan. Declan, you're from the Ottawa area, 20-year-old defenseman. And uh, you've had uh, a really great start to the uh, to the season with the Knights here. Uh, you're sitting in, I believe, you're sitting in third spot in uh, team scoring. Um, has it been hard for you to, to adjust to getting used to Meaford and the in the systems, or has it been uh, pretty easy for you? 
No, honestly, it's uh, it's been pretty easy. Uh, Coach Trelay is doing a lot for us to help us really hammer and home those points on uh, what we need to do to get better and what we need to work on. And uh, he's good with all of us individually as well. He, so, I mean, with all that combined, it helps us out a lot. I want to go back to the West Nipissing game that was in Meaford uh, a couple of weeks ago now. I remember this. Maybe you won't. You've had a few more games in there. Uh, but we thought you had two goals that night. But um, one was uh, taken away from you later on. But that first goal that you scored, um, you know, it's, uh, you know, you got the puck at the blue night, it stuck in my head as being one of the nicest goals I've seen this year, really, because uh, in a smart play on your part, I thought, because um, you know, the puck comes back to you at the blue line, you start to move in, and then all of a sudden, the uh, Lynx defenders, for some reason, peeled off. They, they kind of moved away from you, and it's like you just went, well, okay, and you took a few more steps in and a beautifully placed shot uh, into the lower corner. Yeah, uh, I mean, it just seemed like it all worked out perfectly. And for, like for my sake, that's one thing I've really been working on is trying to walk that line a lot quicker and make it more fluent, give myself more time and give myself a good chance to make a nice play. And it just all worked out. I mean, I saw the goalie was cheating low and thought I'd fire one up high. And I guess it worked out well for me. And then uh, things really got a little hairy after that one because you put that puck in, but it hit the center bar. The referee, the referee called it immediately. He said the puck was in the net. So, uh, and did it hit the, that center bar and then pop back out? Honestly, from my angle, I couldn't really see because right after I ended up shooting the puck, I ended up getting like blocked off from my like sign of you got blocked. And uh, I looked over and I saw the ref pointed in. So I figured it went in and I mean, I'm not going to complain. That's for sure. <laughs> yeah, I'm almost bothered. We watched it a few times on the replay, I'm pretty sure. And by the sound of it, you can tell uh, whether the puck has actually hit the, uh, you know, the outside frame or if it's hit that center padded frame, you know. So, uh, uh, yeah, it definitely hit that center bar. But the referee didn't hesitate. He said that puck was in, in the net for you. So, but then, uh, you know, uh, Wes Nipissing really, uh, um, they lost their cool. Took, you know, you, you scored that goal and then, um, they took some, uh, you ended up with a five on three power play right after that. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, uh, we all talked, we all got together at the bench, had a good conversation about it. And we are, our, our main focus was to keep our heads. We knew they were really starting to lose their heads and lose focus on what was actually the main purpose. And that was a hockey game and they were focused on the past. And our, one of the main things we've been focusing on is, uh, like look to the future and not worry about what happened in the past and you can only control what you can control. And, that was one thing we could control is how our headspace was at that moment in time. Okay, let's let's take a look at uh, prior to coming to Meaford. Uh, as I said, you're a 20 year old defenseman, and yet, uh, well, you've got at least another year left after this year. So, but let's talk about uh, your minor, um, where you played prior to uh, coming to Meaford. Yeah, so I uh, I grew up in Canada. Uh, I played minor hockey with the Canada Blazers. Uh, played a few seasons with the uh, Ottawa Senators. Uh, U uh, I guess Triple A team back home, and then mostly played Double uh, A the rest most of my career. Uh, affiliated a bit with uh, Pembroke's U uh, eight team team, and then from there got the opportunity to get called up, and uh, I started playing with their junior B team, the uh, Whitewater Kings, and that's kind of where I began my junior career. And then uh, from there on out, I just kind of moved around the league a little bit. From uh, I went to Richmond for a little bit, and then went to Westport, which where I was last year. And uh, unfortunately, didn't really have much of a season, but uh, another good program there as well. So yeah, I mostly spent most of my time in Ottawa. It's my first time away from home. Well, you you definitely look uh, you look good out there this year. You can tell that you've uh, um, you know you've had a you've had a good career in minor hockey for sure. You've had some good coaches along the way, and uh, it's a pleasure to watch you uh, to watch you out there. So, uh, and looking forward to even better things for me as the season goes on. We're going to switch over to Alec Boldu for a minute. Alec, uh, welcome to the show. Yeah, thank you. Now, Alec, uh, you know. <laughs> I've been, you know, was with the Knights for a few years and, and just watching you out there on the ice, you've reminded me so much of a guy that was uh, uh, just a super nice guy and uh, a member of the Knights for quite a few years, uh, played defense. His name was Will Vernon. And uh, you, you actually, uh, Danny Smith had sent me a message today and, and compared you to Will Vernon. And uh, I said, no doubt in my mind whatsoever. And uh, uh, just a steady stay-at-home defenseman, 
you know, making effective uh, outlet passes and, and uh, really, really good in, in your own end. Uh, would you take that as a fair assessment of your play? Yeah, for sure. It's a good comparison. Like I, I never seen this guy play, but Danny talked uh, talked about this guy. So it's nice uh, being compared to him. Like I, I try to keep my game uh, simple, making simple plays, being uh, safe defensively. So yeah. Okay, and uh, this will be your your second year with the Knights. You, you were here uh, the season before, I guess. Last season there wasn't one, but you were here uh, that first year. So and it was great that you decided to come back again. So um, how was that first year, and uh, what what made you decide that uh, that you needed to come back to the Knights this year? I really lo I love the town of Meaford. Uh, the people are great, the staff too. So it's fun being around with the, with the guys uh, on the team. Like there's a lot of fun. And then uh, like it's a good level of hockey. So if I, if I want to play like to the next level, it's a, I think it's a good place to be in Meaford. So. No, I have to agree with you. And I've been associated with the, with the team over the years. And, uh, uh, they're just a great group of people and uh, uh, we're very fortunate to have players such as yourself uh, playing in Meaford. So uh, now I had it written down and I forgot what, what the name of the town was that you're from in Quebec. Um, you can tell us what it is and does it compare in size to Meaford or is it is it a bigger center? Yeah, yeah, it's called Warwick. It's a small town like Meaford, so people are close uh like people know each other like me for so like it doesn't uh i'm not too lost or something like that it, it feels like home me for that's fantastic so, yeah. so uh i grew um, up i grew up there so yeah yeah you grew up you're used to the smaller towns and yeah exactly yeah yeah that's great so and uh you know i mentioned that to to one of the other quebec players earlier on and i said it, it must help having uh uh, Patrick Drolet is uh, is your head coach this year, helping with the. Well, your English seems perfectly fine, but uh, um, you know, do you feel more comfortable having a, a French Canadian coach? Yeah, for sure. It's like it's easier to talk with him and being understand it. Sometimes I I look I look for my words, so it's easier in French. But we try to talk a, a bit of English too, to like to to improve it a, a lot, yeah. Okay, so um, now this uh, this season, you've had a great start to the season as well. And uh, um, the Knights, taking a look at the, the last three games, uh, high scoring games, 6-3 uh, loss on uh, Thursday night. Uh, but then you come back the next, a great bounce back game, really. Uh, you, you come back with a very impressive 8-2 win, uh, but then you drop an 8-4. Uh, eight four uh, decision on Sunday. So, um, do you think maybe? Well, the first, you know, fourteen goals allowed in those two games. Are there some things to address on the defense, or is it just the way it went that night? I think it's just the way it went. I don't think we played a whole sixty minutes, so they took advantage. They're a good team. Like Ville Marie and Bradford are good teams. West Nipissing too. So, like they took advantage of our uh, mistakes. So that's why, like, uh, there was high scores, but I think we were still working on the D zone to improve it and and uh, being more like safe defensively. And as uh, you know, the, the Knights still have a lot of games in hand over over uh, just about everybody in the league. Uh, you know, from three to five or six or seven seven games in hand. How important you got a you got a nice stretch here. I'm looking at the schedule and, and you get a nice stretch coming up here where you're going to uh, you'll be playing South Muskoka a couple more times. Uh, uh, New Tech is struggling at the bottom of the league. Uh, how important is it for you to, to get uh, to get points in each one of those games? Because eventually, eventually um, you're not going to have those extra games anymore. Yeah, uh, I totally agree. And uh, like we need to to have those wins. Everybody are, are working on the same way to uh, like to win some games, to climb up in the standings. And I think we're like the season is to get ready for the playoffs because that's the most important uh, part of the season. So we're just trying to 
win those games that like are important for the standings and then uh, we'll just have some fun and work hard together we have a good group of, of people so we have talented players so i think we can win a lot of games and farm up in the standings i agree with you a hard working gritty team and that's what uh, coach Durale had said to me prior to the season that uh, uh, he says, I'm not sure what kind of a team, but you definitely will see a hard working team and certainly have uh, seen that uh, to this point. So Declan Flanagan, we'll jump back over to you for a minute. Um, again, I'll ask you the same question. The, the importance of these these games that, uh, that you have in hand over the other teams, uh, the importance of uh, getting as many points as you can. Yeah, they're huge. I mean, and there's games that we know we should be winning. Even if you look back at our first game of the year, we should have came away with the two points and shouldn't be letting even those teams allow them to get a point because, I mean, we want to get as far ahead of those teams as we can as possible in the standings. We're also trying to catch teams at the top. So I don't think the standings are really showing a full picture of what we're made of yet. And uh, just with the games in hand, like we said, we'll be able to catch teams and hopefully make a charge. I was taking a look at it today. I was uh, pouring over some of the stats and things like that. And, and you know, uh, as I said, I've been around the team for a few years now and, and just looking at the way you play. And I, uh, it's important to get one of those top four spots to get the home ice advantage in the playoffs uh, really early in the season to be thinking playoffs. But hey, honestly, I, I can only see, you know, I look at, uh, uh, you know, the top two teams with the Miskaming and uh, with the Bradford Rattlers. Uh, but, you know, after that, I really think uh, it's going to be a log jam from positions, uh, you know, three three to eight. Yeah, I mean, for sure. I mean, the Rattlers are obviously a good team. I mean, I don't, both times we played them, we definitely haven't come out and played a full 60 minutes of hockey. And that's one thing as a team we're really striving for right now. And that's to come out right at opening puck drop and play a full 60 minutes and not even the first, if you look at the, when they scored their goals in the first period, it was back to back to back to back. And that's when we finally decided to wake up and play some hockey. But that's the one thing we're focused on is trying to play a whole 60 minutes right now. That's right. And uh, I can see it coming out know, the early season. You seem like that second period team. That's when the crutch of your offense was coming through. But then uh, going into West Memphis the other night, you had a three nothing lead at the end of the first. So, uh, it just seems to me that uh, that uh, eventually everything's going to come together for this Me for Nights team. No, yeah, for sure. Well, like you said, we're early on in the season still, so we're still, still trying to piece some things together. But, I mean, once all those pieces of the puzzle are connected, we're going to be flying. Okay, one more question I need to ask you. Number 17, uh, did you pick that number for a reason? Is there a particular reason why you wear number 17? Uh, I mean, not really. My grandpa used to wear 17 when he was kind of playing pro hockey way back in the day. And I think that just kind of stuck with me growing up. I mean, I flip flop between numbers, just either given numbers or whatever's left choice. But I mean, when Danny asked me this year, what I wanted to wear, it was my first choice. And I already knew the answer to that question, because like I told you before, I ran into your mom at the arena, um, you know, a couple of weeks ago there. And she had mentioned that your grandfather was a draft pick. Uh, was it the Boston Bruins or Detroit Red Wings? Yeah, I was drafted to Boston. He was drafted to Boston. So what year would that be? Honestly, I'm not too sure. That would have been way before my time. Yeah, exactly. Okay, anyway, uh, your mom said she wasn't sure how you would react to telling me that, but cat's out of the bag. You can talk to mom later. <laughs> All right, guys, thank you very much uh, for doing this. Uh, Declan Flanagan, Alec Bolduc. Guys, we'll see you Thursday night at the rink. Uh, the Knights take on the Bancroft Rockhounds, uh, and that should be a really entertaining match. Knights win will put them into a tie with uh, Bancroft, and as I said, the Knights uh, moving steadily up the standing, so uh, hope to keep it going that way. Guys, thank you very much. And like I said, see you Thursday night. So for producer Mark Perry, I'm Rob Leonard. Uh, take care, and we'll see you next time on Night Stock.